about the past week, I have been poked and prodded to hell and back. Yeah, that pain behind my eyes? Turns out it was just an ordinary migraine. Hmm, <laughs> some migraine. Ah, anyway, anyway, you don't want to hear about that. Welcome, my human friends. Multi-sighted mutant Funky M here. Now, last time in our mutant bomb, we talked about Wolverine's past in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Let's catch up with the furry-faced Clawslinger and discover his present. Released in 2013, The Wolverine is a continuation of James Logan Howlett's journey as he travels to Japan, dealing with the loss of Jean Grey and the promise of a Japanese soldier he saved in World War II. But there's a mighty big bump in the road, as along the way, our hero loses his healing factor. It's a right royal rumble with everyone's favourite adamantium enhanced Canadian. But is it any good? Well, let's find out as we catch up with... The Wolverine! It's 1945, and Wolverine is a prisoner of war in Japan, in a camp opposite the city of Nagasaki. Okay, so for those in the back, Nagasaki is one of two cities that had a nuke dropped on them. Though how Wolverine knew about the Manhattan Project is anyone's guess. But Wolverine is a good guy, and saves one of the Japanese officers. Oh! Even with his mutant healing factor, he's gonna feel that one in the morning. Cut to the present day. Wolverine has left the X-Men, and headed to the woods. But local hunters aren't all that good. And so, our hero does the decent thing, and looks to do an indecent thing, before a Japanese girl steps into the fray. So the red-headed Japanese girl is Yukio. She works for Mr. Yoshida. You know, the guy Wolfie saved from the nuke. Anyway, he's now very old and dying, and would like to see Logan again. So he sent Yukio out to fetch our Wolfie. After an imposed brush-up. You know I'd heard tales about trying to give Wolfie a bath? I don't inquire too much, because I don't heal up as fast as he does. Also, I like living. Logan finally comes face to face with Mr. Yoshida, who has built an empire, and can offer a very special gift to our hero. Which turns out to be his final gift, as in the night, Mr. Yoshida dies. So you're probably wondering what this very special gift actually is. Well, it's the switching off of Logan's healing factor. Yeah. Not such a great gift. Logan is invited to the funeral, but all is not as it seems. As the priest was a plant for the Yakuza, who looked to kidnap Yoshida's granddaughter Mariko. Which goes about as well as you'd expect, as Logan and the Yoshida security leap into action. But our hero seems to be having an off day. Though in my opinion, even Wolfie on an off day is still better than most Special Forces guys on their best days. Still, he manages to get Mariko to the bullet train, and decides to keep an eye on her there. Which is a good thing, because the Yakuza aren't known to give up easily. After dispatching them, our hero takes Mariko somewhere to lie low. And in return, Mariko takes our hero to be patched up. Welcome to our slow healing world, Wolfie. It's terrible. You know, I still get jit from his shoulders from carrying an AK-47 for five years. Oh yeah, they gave me some rub for that when I went to have my eyes done. But there's at least a lull, as Logan and Mariko reach Nagasaki, and the safe house. And at the safe house, we learn why Mariko is so important all of a sudden. So why is Mariko so important? Well because she's the heir to the entire Yoshida Empire. Seems that Mr. Yoshida has cut his son Shingen out of the will, and Shingen is Mariko's father. So now, Mariko stands to be the sole beneficiary. Though while the safe house is remote enough, the forces of Yoshida's son Shingen take only two days to find them. But Logan is right on the trail. 
starting with Shingen's henchman, Noburo. It's looking grim for Mariko, until her childhood sweetheart saves the day. Yeah, so get this. Mariko's childhood sweetheart is head of a ninja clan that's provided security to the Yoshida family for centuries. And while Logan and Yukio are too late to save the day, they're just in time to resurrect a wolverine, despite Shingen's best efforts. And so, Logan heads off to rescue Mariko, right into a trap. Our hero fights like hell, but he only has the strength of one man. And so, Wolverine is brought before the real mastermind of this madness, Viper. And her giant samurai robot. You ever get the feeling that reality isn't all that real? Wolverine deals with the implausible robot, while Yukio appears to deal with Viper. But dealing with the robot knocks Wolverine through a wall. And this robot turns out to be Mr. Yoshida himself. Turns out he wasn't dead. He just wanted Wolvie's healing for his very own. And he's managed to cut through his adamantium claws to get to it. But discarded adamantium claws can come in useful for a number of things. But Mariko has other ideas. And so our movie ends as Logan returns to America to deal with some unfinished business. So that's Wolverine's present. I hear they might be talking about his future, in the future. But for now, let's focus on whether or not this deserves its spot on the Mutants on Team. And I think it does. After X-Men 3, and after the disaster that was X-Men Origins Wolverine, I was tapped out on the Mutants. When this first played in cinemas, I decided that I'd give it a miss. After all, how good could it be after X-Men Origins Wolverine? Some decision, as this movie is so much better. The plot is the least interesting part, being one part escort the princess, one part recover the MacGuffin, and a final boss left field reveal that comes out of nowhere. But the performances, at least from Hugh Jackman, our eponymous hero, and Tao Okamoto, Mariko, hold it together well. All the better for the moments of quietness at the Nagasaki safe house. Although, this movie could have done without the spirit of Jean Grey hanging over it. Her appearances seem to be only for continuity's sake, and after this movie, continuity's going out the window. Still, the movie flows well. Story is shown, not just told. Action scenes are paced with quieter scenes. A bruising climax is followed by a heartfelt denouement, and even at 126 minutes, it doesn't feel stretched or even relaxed. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that this movie is a great example of how to pace a movie. But it's not all good. Viper is just another sensuous female villain, all seductive eyes and hidden venom. Kenuichi Harada, leader of the ninja clan that Viper allied herself with, was pretty much a complete non-entity, for as few lines and as little screen time as he got. Overall though, the Wolverine does what X-Men Origins Wolverine didn't, and tells a compelling story about James Howlett. And really, that's the only thing a Wolverine movie needs to do. Now, I don't like to talk about this, but there is a dark future I have to address. But before we go forward, we'll have to go back. This is your multi-sighted mutant host, Funky M, inviting you to join me in seven days as we go all the way back to the 1960s for the first class of the X-Men. Until then, see you around, humans.